Mika, I'm a quantum programmer. And I'm a theorist, so I'm not making any uh, quantum, real quantum computer, but I'm, I'm all work in the theory. And then I'm working at the University of Tokyo, Japan. So uh, my research area is quantum algorithm, quantum programming, and also foundation, understanding the foundation of quantum mechanics. So here is my um, uh, group uh, photo, and then and this I usually use pen and paper, and then this my office desk is this lots of um, computers. So and then I'm uh, also I'm a wife of a British businessman. And I'm a mother of a 19 years old son, and I'm also uh, currently working a council member of Association of Asia Pacific Physical Societies. So, um, yeah, and then maybe something very um, special people would think I'm uh, different from other is when maybe uh, that is I am the first female physics professor at the University of Tokyo. Uh, in the history, and then I'm, when I started as the associate professor in physics, I was the first female associate professor in this uh, department of physics in University of Tokyo uh, in 2001, and then it took for a while. The second one was hired in the department in 2016. So in general, the female ratio is about like a six percent of the members of the physical society in Japan. So um, not many female professors in science in my generation in Japan yet, and then not many role models for female scientists. So um, something wonder why I'm such a rare species in here. And then maybe the um, principle that drove me this career, despite the lack of prece precedence, is um, I I think um, the, the following this um, don't be afraid of trial and error, but we do challenge. So um, I'm actually, I don't know how old am I look like, but um, I'm, I'm in physics for the last 33 years. I joined the um, university um, in Japan in 1987. This is a small university, all female universities. And then, then and the end of first year, I met quantum mechanics. And since then, I have been fascinated by quantum. Uh, I have been joining master course and PhD course at the same university. This is um, not maybe typical in outside Japan or outside Asia. This We have all female uh, university education, and you can obtain PhD from there. And then I, I uh, went to uh, US and UK for my uh, post, uh, postdoc uh, research. And then I met quantum information theory. And then I came back to Japan and my son was born and I became a professor. And then the Maria, my career going on like this. So first of all, like I have been really, really fascinated by quantum. And I think many of you as the similar way but I really uh, like quantum because the, for the first time, sight, the quantum looks very counterintuitive, very odd, but quantum mechanics give total logical explanation. And that really opened my kind of eyes that learning like, a, it's somehow it feels like a, uh, I can find the truth or something that's what we can see is not necessarily what it is, or don't tricked by how it looks, um, and this realize and check implicit assumption. We we tend to assume a lot of things, but it may be not really ground grounded in the nature. And to find a better and a logical way for explanation. So since 1988, um, I have been really fascinated quantum and. And not just understanding quantum, but I really want to utilize quantum for lots of things, especially information processing. Okay, so it looks like my uh, history looks rather smooth. I, I kind of directly coming straightly to the um, 
uh, professorship or research, but actually there's a lot of lots of error, failure, trials, program to get through. For example, like um, first of all, I like uh, before meeting quantum, I, I regretted to join physics department, or in after master courses, I failed to get the nice job I wanted to take in the industry, didn't get. Or I tried to go to Germany for my postdoc, uh, sorry, PhD, but I didn't get the fellowship or lots of failure. And I'm very impressed, uh, depressed in, in Harvard when I had the first postdoc and then the second postdoc when I arrived in Perry College, there's nothing work, there are lots of problems. And after being an associate professor handling newborn baby and a new job, it's have a lot of problems. Um, but um, um, there, there's a lot of problem, and, and maybe people, successful people, didn't talk much about the failure or error or problem. But actually, behind it, a lot of error and problem. And then I really want to encourage you that some the, you can go through by challenge. And so the, as an example, maybe I would like to show the, my briefly tell the test case as a test case. That's my days in Imperial College London in 1997 to 1999 and when I was postdoc. So in 1996, I joined uh, in, as Imperial College London, this quantum optics group um, uh, as a postdoc. And this was the picture when I joined and in those days um, uh, the group of professors are Peter Knight group. It's a very international group, um, lots of people coming all the different countries. We really enjoy this, um, this the ex excellent um, uh, the research. So I started well in London when I just started my postdoc, just getting married and then the summer in London is beautiful. Uh, and the new project going okay, and then okay, and very fun. But when winter comes, somehow the new project doesn't work well, and my husband is working, have to work in away from home for months. And in winter, some um, like a bath. This this was kind of terrible. The ba bathroom water in our flat leaked to downstairs, and then this at the middle of night, this downstairs guy banging my door, and then the water leak, call the plumber or something. I I even know the word plumber in um, uh, in those days, kind of thing, and they figure out this how to stop this water, or like uh, lots of lots of problems. And this, this dark and low sky of London is so depressing and really, uh, I, I was really depressed. So the breakthrough was happened in this uh, Christmas party at, night, at the end of 1996. Um, and I mentioned my this very miserable situation to a postdoc who was leaving the group soon later. And he, he, he was very nice and told my situation to other colleagues and who actually who has been started working on quantum information in our group. And these are the people who in those states that are still postdoc and student, but now are big professor, Professor Plenio and, and in, at Ulm and the Professor Vedral at Oxford. So they asked me this uh, Professor Plenio now and the professor Vedra now they, they asked me to join the project on the multi-party entanglement and I jumped in research in quantum information and this is the time the door to quantum information was open so I, I, I think it's very good to not just hold the problem by yourself but really consult others talking to others of the problem there would be some good way to get the the get through, the door for the get through would be happening. And then in there, uh, we had uh, invented this telecloning. Uh, that was in those days, this multipartite entanglement is not well understood and then not very good to use was not known. And the methodology was not totally established as there's no textbook like as we have now. So we 
work trial and error and then finding a protocol to obtain this optimal clones of the quantum information uh, using this multipartite entangled state. So it's turned out to be the one of the world's first protocol to use multipartite entanglement for a resource of quantum computation. Um, so this result would open up my career, I think, uh, to be the, uh, the toward this professorship. So it's 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 a little it's sort of accident I get into maybe quantum information if I'm not uh, depressed and then I was doing well in this quantum optics maybe I maybe still stay in quantum optics um, but if things not going well and then maybe you can figure out different direction um, with with your colleague and then this that was I think is very important. And later, this um, telecloning has been realized, and I, I, there is a, some newspaper article we have. Uh, have this, this, yeah. Anyway, so that was the, uh, my days in the 1990s. And then now in 2020, what I'm doing now. So I'm still working as a quantum physicist slash programmer, and then so the, maybe it is not directly connected to the business in very short time, but um, I'm considering and researching the world where fully fault tolerant quantum computers are viable and then what we can do. At the same time as a physicist, I'm interested in why and how the quantum mechanics can power up quantum uh, power up information processing. So this is, it's something we wanted to know quantum better and then and the end and is as a basic science and also at the same time I would like to know the good use of this uh, curious and then counter into inter encounter uh, uh, this uh, this odd nature of quantum mechanics so this would be our, um, and then this is really the very nice thing with the quantum is these two sides are really close to each other. And then I, I like to do something very uh, non-conventional, different thing from others. And then what we are trying to do now here is uh, we are trying to figuring out this functional quantum programming can be possible or not. So we try to consider quantum computer is not just a um, calculating classical program or classical state uh, processor, but we want to use combine quantum system with, with quantum computer to make quantum process processor. So as this direction the research, we are trying to uh, make a new algorithm uh, useful for this quantum process processor. Uh, oh, and then another interesting thing I'm thinking uh, as a physicist is this distributed quantum information processing. Um, and this is quite interesting to learn about this. The computation is how we can understand the world of uh, causality and time and space, how related, how parallelizability, entanglement, uh, causal structure would matter in quantum. Okay, finally, I would like to um, have small, some messages for the young uh, colleagues and through my experience. I really think that some um, challenge is very important in respect. Don't worry uh, about this trial error. And an important thing I, I think is that this, please do not limit yourself for your preconception conception like uh, or like uh, in Asia it's lots of preconception or the the common common sense for women but um, this is really not really common sense and then uh, believe your your instinct and the world is open for you and in that case we always need to seek the more um, what is more essential and it would be always nice to be unique and original and again, this don't be afraid of trial, uh, trial and error. Even you got error or fail, you can try again. So, and then think enough to convince at least yourself uh, for everything you want to worry. And then, and also it'll be really nice this um, 
uh, the, to the other people and help each other and help the next generations. So I really would like to uh, see your uh, meet you as a colleague in the future for this developing quantum technology and science. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Mio. That was amazing. Um, thank you for your honest. Um, I love hearing about people's career. I think we all have challenges, and I think it's great when we can um, admit them and show how we worked our way through them. So uh, sounds like uh, hiring a plumber in the middle of the night was quite a challenge, among other things. Uh, very memorable. Um, uh, how are there very many other women um, now at the University of Tokyo? You said you're the first physics professor. Are there other women or postdocs or students in your depart in the department? Unfortunately, so we have the second associate professor in astrophysics, but apparently it's really um, maybe unpopular or no many applicants or no else and nobody else and then i'm really worrying is there's no almost no female students so we have three four five students out of 70 undergraduate and then in particular in condensed matter and then quantum information um currently none in our department no female student wow so, Terrible. Uh, I, we are trying to get one and working hard, but mysteriously, we are not very popular. Okay, well, I, we need to work on that. Or getting some international students to Japan, huh? something. That would be the, the, maybe the only solution for it. And then maybe some Japanese would, the girls would copy the success, hopefully. Yeah, yeah that's a great idea. Uh, thank you for that idea, Amelia. Um, thank you so much for your talk tonight. And there's a huge crowd on. We appreciate your thought and uh, learning about you. Um, unfortunately, it's time we need to move on to our next talk. And so everybody's going to hit the red button at the left-hand corner of their screen and move on. And um, thank you. And if I get any questions, I will send you an email with questions. Everybody knows that they can just send me questions. So thank you so much, Dr. Mio. And we wish you a, a wonderful, is it the morning or the evening for you? Evening. Morning? It's morning. Oh, almost <laughs> noon. Okay. Well, we wish you a wonderful day. And thank you so much for your time and a wonderful talk. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.